remain standing as we pray. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the love of wisdom. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, teachers and classmates, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit that we may know him and make him known through him at all times and in all places. May give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Oh, thank you. Wow. <laughs> and welcome to Highlands Latin School's commencement ceremony for the 2013-2014 school year. We, the faculty and administration, are delighted to celebrate this occasion with the family and friends of our graduates, all of whom 
have walked alongside these students through these formative years. Additionally, though, we are humbled by this occasion. For we know that the stewardship to, to which we have been called by these families is no petty partnership, but a task of titanic worth. As a faculty and administration, we bear no illusions about the gravity of our stewardship to partner with you in raising up a child in the way he or she should go. Thus, in the same way, we do not hold lightly the degree of trust which has been given to us. Therefore, all these things considered, we cannot help but say thank you. Thank you for the gift of these students. Thank you for entrusting us to teach them. Thank you for allowing us the privilege of knowing these students who in teaching them have taught us much, who in partaking in their formation have likewise partook in crafting and refining us. Certainly at the end of this landmark year, these 13 students are not the only ones leaving dramatically different. For on this, for in this school, and on this school, they have surely left their mark. And we will bear that mark with pride. Now, it is my primary task in the remaining minutes to sketch for you a picture of the class of 2014, introducing them collectively before honoring them individually. For as surely each student has his or her own unique character, so does each collection of said students. Classes themselves take on a distinct and definite personality. But however distinct, such collective personalities are not easily defined. I myself, in the search for the perfect adjective, found the task rather to be like shooting a moving target. For no matter how still, straight, and strong the word, the object of its aim was so large and alive that no shot could find its center. So, as should be the custom of foolish men reeling in their ignorance, I sought the words of the more eloquent and wise, and not shockingly, found keen insight in the words of G.K. Chesterton. In the context of describing Christianity as the unity of many strange yet necessary paradoxes, he states the following. It is true that the historic church has at once emphasized celibacy and emphasized the family, has at once, if one may put it so, been fiercely for having children and fiercely for not having children. Christianity has kept the two side by side like two strong colors, red and white, like the red and white upon the shield of St. George. It has always had a healthy hatred of pink. It hates the combination of two colors, which is the feeble expedient of the philosophers. It hates the evolution of black into white, which is tantamount to a dirty gray. All that I am urging here can be expressed by saying that Christianity sought in most of these cases to keep two colors coexistent, but pure. It is not a mixture like russet or purple. It is rather like a shot silk. For a shot silk is always, like, is always at right angles and is in the pattern of the cross. This class is the shot silk class. To explain simply, shot silk, I had to look this up, is the result of weaving two or more contrasting fabrics in the warp and the weft. The pattern of the cross that G.K. Chesterton talks about, vertical, horizontal. When one does this with the fine and tightly bound fibers of silk, it produces an effect of iridescence, the illusion that the fabric is changing colors. 
And so it is with this class. Each student, like a stark and stunning color, all of these colors are tightly woven together in the cross pattern of the warp and the weft, not producing a clashing and cluttered mess like the multicolored static screen on old TVs, but rather the many colors morph in such a way as to make a fabric that looks alive, in which the colors almost glow. Real unity, real diversity, neither of which is compromised, just as in God's church and in himself. And so we have our class, this proverbial coat of many colors, which also possesses a magic and mysterious unity that could only be brought about by love, the greatest mysteries of mysteries. For indeed, love is the only means of unity, not only love for one another, but a common love and affection for him who first loved us in Christ. And that is why I look at this class with great joy and even hope. For in this class lies a testament to the mission of Highlands Latin School, that by loving God and loving truth, for how can the other not follow from the first? that such stark threads as our students may be brought into one beautiful fabric for the glory of God and the love of the world. Therefore, I present to you this testament to God's work, this shot silk class weaved together only by the form of the cross through which God lavished his love upon us and unites many affections into one the class of 2014. And so now, now I want to introduce Will McKinnon to give the commencement address. I know that many of you guys have already sat through about two hours of speeches today, so just bear with me as I sit through one more. Uh, thank you all in the audience for being here today. Uh, we all really appreciate the support which you all have given us throughout the years. I want to start this speech with a very sincere thank you to the one person who has made all of this even a possibility, Mrs. Lowe. You basically raised this school out of nothing and everything I'll be talking about today can be attributed to you. You have built an incredible school, and we all are so sincerely thankful for it. I would also like to thank Mr. Wheatley and Mr. King. Uh, the day-to-day -day rhythm of this school, which you have created here, and the overall character of this place is just incredible. And many of the experiences that we have here can be greatly attributed to you too. So thank you both very much. But in my speech today, I want to address three major groups. Our teachers, my fellow students, and my classmates. To try to sum up for those of you who do not spend 32 plus hours a week here, what HLS is really like, just telling you the curriculum or the atmosphere of the place would be to sell short the true experience. Rather, this true experience is tied up with these three major groups. So by addressing these groups, I hope to paint a picture for you what the HLS education is about and what it has been like to grow in this place. So to my teachers. If I were to tell you how many drafts I went through trying to find the words to thank you, you'd probably laugh because only Mr. Hernandez and Mr. Amundrud can count that high. <laughs> but to be completely honest, I found it incredibly difficult to find the words to describe what you mean and have meant to my classmates and I. Every time I wrote something down, it seemed to lack the luster and the eloquence that you all deserve in a thank you. You all have not only taught us with your words, but with your actions. You all come in every day ready to serve us. 
In reflection, I find it very sad that we almost take for granted that we have teachers who come into work every day early just to have conversations with kids in the lunchroom. If there were one word that has come up more than any other in the HLS curriculum, it would be love. And I believe that if there were one word to sum up how you all act towards your students, it would be the same. Romans 12, 6 through 8 says, We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is to give, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it generously. If it is to show mercy, then do it cheerfully. I believe that every one of you has found your gift in teaching. I thank you sincerely for blessing us with your gifts and encourage you to continue to use it well throughout the years. Thank you all so much for the love which you have shown us. The impact you have made on our lives is more significant than you probably know. To my fellow students, one of my favorite quotes is from C.S. Lewis in Mere Christianity. It says, if you read history, you will find that the Christians who did most for the present world were precisely those who thought most of the next. It is since Christians have largely ceased to think of the other world that they have become so ineffective in this one. I encourage each of you, do not be overwhelmed with the tasks you are confronted with every day. Know that you are where you are because God has put you there. You have all probably heard Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Know that with every challenge you face, God is growing you into the men and women that he will use. Another one of my favorite verses is Psalm 2713. I'm still confident in this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So keep your eyes fixed on the next world while you let God work wonders in this one. You all have been given an incredible gift in this school. I encourage you to use it to its full potential. And finally, to my classmates. I practiced so many times saying, this is it. But really, this, this is it. <laughs> we have spent so many years together. Some days have been a joyful, and others have been a bit bumpy. But in reality, that's what growing up is like. We have all grown up together, and we have each made lasting imprints, not just on each, of our, each other's lives, but on who we all are. Putting that into words is actually a bit scary, but it's every bit of the truth. We have been so much a part of each other's lives that it seems unnatural to say goodbye to each of you. I realize that I have witnessed the development of 12 extraordinary individuals. As Paul says in Philippians 1, 3 through 6, and I already shared this with you guys, I thank, God, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident in this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. I'll say it again, we have all grown up together. It's been amazing to see God start a great work in each of you. And it's exciting to see him carry it on to its completion. It's sad for us to say goodbye to one another, but as Mr. Dennis has so often told us, the hardest is yet to come, but the best is yet to come. Thank you all for seven awesome years. I love all you guys.
a note to myself not to put that song before my speeches. <laughs> I'm already having a rough time, and now I had to follow that. Uh, I've known these seniors, and I'm not even going to look at them now because it's going to be too hard. Uh, I've known these seniors a lot from for five to you know, 11 years, and uh, you know I've always given the personal narratives. Uh, and I always really try to be judicial and do 25 to 30 lines for every student, so it's fair. <laughs> so no one thinks about it, and uh, it's timing them all out, and you know they're about three minutes a piece, and then there's 13 seniors, and I was like, wow, I'm going to be up here a while. So <laughs> if uh, if I you know go too slow or anything, I, I feel like you know it won't bother me at all if anyone has to get up and move around a little bit. So I like to start off in alphabetical order, like tradition, and have a uh, uh, with, with Daniel Cooper Boss. <laughs> That's a new thing we're doing this year. <laughs> but Daniel, Daniel Cooper started at Highlands Latin School in the seventh grade. I distinctly remember Cooper applying to HLS as a friend of an HLS student whose name was Stephen Panava. Uh, Cooper was able to gain admittance to HLS obviously on his own merit, but in the summertime we were always referred to Cooper as that kid who applied who's the friend of Stephen Panava. Uh, the reason this story, the reason this story still really resonates with me, is because on the surface it appears that that you know Cooper just fell upon on HLS and simply following a friend, but in reality, Cooper has become the friend to everyone at HLS. Cooper, Cooper has been, has a a very caring and giving, a loving personality. Uh, I so appreciate his uh, personal desire to really help others. Even when his own means are not being met, uh, he, he places sincere concern, expends a lot of energy for the good of his classmates. Uh, he protects his sister, his mother. Uh, he's a defender of his teachers. My eyes are already going. Cooper always asks me how I'm doing each morning. And it's not a cordial comment in passing. He stops and he really wants to know how I am doing each morning. From the closing school ceremony, you know that Cooper was selected as the house, as to serve the house of David as the house leader. And the reason Cooper is such a great leader is because he actually leads from the front. He gets involved at a very personal level and he takes charge. Cooper is also, as we've learned, an extremely diligent worker, wonderfully talented scholar. He has taken very challenging courses at HLS in his career and armed with congressional recommendation letters, Eagle Scout, Stellar academic resume at HLS, Cooper applied to and was accepted to the United States Naval Academy, and his appointment will begin this fall. Cooper, I want to thank you for leading your house and for leading this school for the past six years with honor and such kindness. We've learned a lot from what it means to be a friend. Good luck, Cooper. Magdalena Claire Collum also started Highlands Latin School in the seventh grade. I remember, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, good. <laughs> you stared. I remember Maggie's start here because uh, it was with a little bit of uncertainty and trepidation. You see, Maggie, even as a seventh grader, I was teaching a class, I think she was observing, she came across to me as very calculating, cautious, and perhaps even skeptical. I was afraid that she didn't like being in my class or, or perhaps that we were not teaching the right things. But as I've come to know Maggie and her family over these very many years, I've come to learn that Maggie really does like challenges, and she loves to learn. She loves to spend time engaged in something that's meaningful and purposeful. She's always been a bit mature beyond her age in this regard. But what I'm most impressed with Maggie is not her academic accolades, her tireless persistence and hard work, but what I'm most impressed with is something I've observed, observed more recently. This year, Maggie was appointed head of St. George. And I recall a conversation with Maggie prior to her giving a speech in front of 150 students at our full school retreat. She was nervous and she said, kind of like me, I hate doing these kind of things. I'm not good at it. And before I could even redirect her or build some confidence, she was very quick and said, but this is good for me. I need to learn how to do this. I can do this. And then she just walked out the door. 
I mean, how many of us actually take on the things that frighten us most? Maggie's family claims to have been shorted by God when they distributed the math DNA gene. And Maggie, early on, talked a lot about being bad at math. But it was not until her sophomore year, challenged by Mr. Ominard in geometry, that Maggie really turned her attention and interest into math, I think because it became a challenge. She proceeded to take summer pre-calculus course and took the BC calculus exam her junior year and passed with the highest possible score. While Mr. Amonrud may have turned her on to math, as Maggie tells me, I think it's Maggie's lack of fear and her sincere interest in learning something new that propelled her forward. Maggie gained admittance to Princeton University and earned a full scholarship next year. I believe they saw in her the same young woman that I'm beginning to see, a fearless student who strives to learn because learning for learning's sake, as Ms. Collum always says, is good. Best of luck next year at Princeton, Maggie. Thank you for six great years. Lily Chenault Dobbs has been a Highlands Latin School student since the fifth grade. My first memories of Millie, Lily was that she was such a do-gooder. <laughs> she is the oldest sibling of three. I'm the oldest of four, and in stereotypical fashion, I think Lily, like me, follows the rules. Lily obeys the spirit of the law, but she also obeys the letter of the law. <laughs> And I believe it's very important in a class to have students who actually strive for order, structure, discipline, and routines. But Lily is a lot more than just a, that rule follower. There are times in every senior class when things just do not go, when things start to go downhill. These seniors have HLS schoolwork, which is no light chore. They have college applications to complete. A lot of them have jobs where they're earning money. They have social demands placed on them. Inevitably, there comes a time, usually around December or January or February, perhaps March, April, or May, or, or September or October, <laughs> when the seniors really hit a wall and they break down. Lily just seemed this year to have such a calm perspective and a maturity that when the stresses increased around her and her classmates, it appeared to me from afar that Lily was the anchor of the class. She really doesn't talk a whole lot. She doesn't organize support groups, and she's not like a vocal leader telling everyone what to do, but she just always seems to be under control. Lily is a self-proclaimed homebody as well. I try to get her to go to as many things as possible, but she really enjoys being at home and with her, with her brothers and sisters. But HLS is all that Lily has known for the last eight years, and I knew that this year was going to be tough on Lily because I knew she was nervous and anxious about moving on. But in my opinion, Lily is ready, and she's had a great year. Next year, Lily will attend Indiana University Southeast. It's hard to believe it's eight years have passed, but Lily, you're welcome back anytime. We'll miss you a lot. I think I'll have to start reading and stop looking. <laughs> I won't make it. Shelby Elizabeth Dugan. <laughs> That's right. She remembered. Okay, good. <laughs> Began her HLS career in the eighth grade. Unbeknownst to many HLS students and families, that uh, when Elizabeth started, I met with her mom and I found out that Elizabeth was virtually at that time a, almost a professional dancer. I mean, she had a schedule that Mrs. Dugan brought to me that showed me when and where and how often she'd be missing school and all these things that she was doing outside of school. And I got very nervous. Uh, but Mrs. Dugan, in Mrs. Dugan's fashion, we've had many meetings over the years, she patted me on the shoulder and she said, she's very organized and she will do fine, I promise. And, and I said, well, okay. <laughs> At first, I did not know how it was even possible for Elizabeth to go to school and have such a, a schedule that she has. But then when I was watching a movie with my children, and it was a Harry Potter movie, <laughs> one of the main characters in one of the movies, I do not know which series it was, 
was able, her name Hermione, was able to attend multiple classes that met at the same time <laughs> while at Hogwarts. She had this locket that would transport her back in time so that she could attend all of these multiple classes. And I immediately, kid you not, swear I was like, that is how Elizabeth Dugan <laughs> does everything. Elizabeth has taken also the most challenging courses that we've offered at HLS and has maintained an, a stellar academic record. Elizabeth Dugan may be the most focused and determined HLS graduate that I've ever seen or I've ever had walk across the stage. Nothing seems to stand in her way. I recently learned that, uh, as of last, this week, I think, <laughs> I recently learned that Elizabeth earned one of the most prestigious scholarships, Link only give five, offered to students to attend Bellarmine University where she plans to major in pre-medicine. With her sights set on medical school in 2018, I thought she had her plate full, but she's already, already auditioned and earned a spot on the Bellarmine dance team. It seems to me that I don't have to worry about Elizabeth being bored or not having enough things to do next year. Her plate is always full. Elizabeth, I want to thank you for five great years at HLS. You've truly been an outstanding student, classmate, and friend. Come back and visit us and your brothers and sisters anytime. Thank you. <laughs> Brad Thomas Heimbrock. <laughs> I told him this was going to be goofy, but <laughs> it's, it's working. Brad has attended Highlands Latin School since the sixth grade. Brad, I learned, uh, is the third in line of four Heimbrock boys. Having three boys of my own, I see often how the pecking order works from the oldest to the youngest. And I sometimes wonder, and I need to talk with Mr. and Mrs. Heimbrock about, you know, do the older siblings pick on the younger siblings too much? And I'm trying to manage that at my house to see how it works out. And so Brad being the third is my, I'm picturing him as my little Edward at home. As I've gotten to know Brad over the past seven years, I've watched him really grow in confidence. Brad has a very unique perspective on life. Perhaps it's because he is the third in a, in a large family, but he sees a bigger picture than most and has an innate ability to, for lack of a better phrase, turn it on whenever it, whatever it is, needs to be turned on. Brad can do it. When some students get overwhelmed with homework, tests, quizzes, and papers, Brad really does not. Brad will like you to believe that he just does enough to get by. And maybe that's true to a certain extent. But Brad is also his best when he needs to be his best. And Brad's best, quite honestly, is extremely special. I recall talking to Brad, I think it was the early part of last year, or maybe the, it was last year, though, about a college entrance exam test that he took. And I thought, personally, that he scored a little low for his, you know, for his ability. And I wanted to ask, you know, hey, did you, you know, do you study? Do you need a book? Do you, is there anything that needs to, you know, we need to do anything? And I kid you not, Brad looked at me and said, and I remember the words, and I just walked away. He said, Mr. Wheatley, I'm just warming up. <laughs> it's like, all right. <laughs> Check. I've always appreciated, although at times been perplexed, by Brad's very laid-back attitude. But it is this personality that fits this class so well. Brad's very witty and often makes these dry and sarcastic comments at exactly the right time. He lightens the mood and makes everyone laugh. Brad has always been a fiercely loyal classmate and HLS student. Brad told me on our trip that his two older brothers went to St. X, but after his eighth grade year, his parents could, have, could not have forced him to go to HLS, or to St. X. He was an HLS student <laughs> through and through. This fall, Brad will attend the University of Louisville Speed School for Engineers. Brad plans to study chemical engineering. Brad, I'm very pleased and proud and thankful for the past seven years I've got to, to know you. Please come back and visit any time. So. <laughs> She's not looking at me. Christina Marie Holloway. 
has been a student in Highlands Latin School since the fifth grade. Christina, and if I did this right, like nine of her fellow classmates, is the oldest sibling. Raise your hand if you're the oldest sibling. Let's see if I'm accurate. Nine, good, I'm good. All right, but Christina holds the distinction of being from the largest family. I believe Christina is the oldest of six, I know. <laughs> and that actually correlates with my first memories of, of Christina because when Christina started in fifth grade, it seemed like, and it's probably true, that Christina about every year would come to me and say, my mom's had a baby. And we would make an announcement <laughs> and we would say, and, and, and I finally lost count. Like, <laughs> I was like, okay, sure. All right. What is that? What number is that? All right. I think people are very quick to describe Christina as being shy and perhaps quiet. Maybe that's accurate to a certain extent. But I know that in a large family or in a large class, and this is a large class for us, that have lived together, breathed together, shared the same rooms for the last seven to eight years, that perhaps being quiet can serve as a very effective defensive strategy to avoid any problems. <laughs> I believe this senior class, more than any other senior class, is full of a lot of large and unique personalities. And at times, these personalities may clash or emotions may run high. But I've always appreciated how Christina, who is very intelligent and opinionated herself, will wait, let others have their say, let others scream or shout if need be, before weighing in with her opinion. I see Christina in this class as serving that very specific purpose. She is agreeable, she's steady, she's careful. Sometimes these types of people are overlooked as being passive, or, but I think it takes actually a lot of courage to wait, to pause, to reflect, to choose your words wisely. I also know that Christina is a very good writer. She has a, a very funny and clever and creative side to her that I don't get to see very often but I did see it a little bit on our senior trip in Gatlinburg. Christina really enjoys English literature, and I thought that she was planning to pursue an English degree, but the most recent thing I got from Ms. Bowen said that you are now undecided, which does play into my speech, because I think she's carefully weighing out her options, and she's deciding that next year, Christina will attend the University of Louisville. Christina, thank you for eight great years at HLS. They really have gone by too fast. Thank you. Come back and I don't know if I'm even happy. We'll keep going. <laughs> William Robert McKinnon started at HLS in the sixth grade. <laughs> that's right. Okay. I thought people were like, yeah, I know that's right. What I remember most about Will is that uh, we had a conversation with Will's parents and we spent a lot of time talking uh, with Mrs. Lowe as well to try to determine if HLS was the best school for Will. We were you know, meeting and doing what we normally do with every family. I distinctly remember conversations about spelling, reading comprehension, fluency, on task speed, these types of things that we talked about. And, and, and it, was, uh, it was something that we were just were, were weighing. And after prayer, conversation, research, we took the leap and. And I could not imagine this class without Will McKinnon as an HLS student. I can say without hesitation that Will is a fixture of this class. He has quite simply been a solid scholar and classmate from day one at HLS. Will, along with a, a few of his fellow classmates, were part of our very first HLS class this year to take AP Physics. This is by no means an easy course. It's quite a challenge for seniors to take on. The content's difficult, the problems are challenging, the pace is fast. The students got overwhelmed. <laughs> and I encouraged them to work together. And one day they took me up on this offer and they went up to the, girl, the seventh grade girls' classroom. And they had the 24 feet of whiteboard and they were working on those problems at the, up at the board. And I walked in there, Will was leading the group. The words that came to mind were professional, deliberate, careful, cautious. Students were asking Will questions and Will was in charge. I'm quite certain they did not call him Mr. McKinnon, but they were raising their hands. <laughs> but there is also a side to Will that is just fun-loving, charismatic, and very optimistic. Will exudes energy. I do not believe I've ever seen Will without a smile on his face. 
Uh oh. He's not helping me out. This, but this is this truly is a remarkable feat, considering Will broke his arm at the boys' retreat a few years back. The break was so bad. If you want to see pictures, talk to Mr. Brooks. That in the, the Mr. King and Mr. Brooks took him to this tiny emergency room in Irvine, Kentucky. I mean, the it was this big. The doctor walks in shudders, closes his eyes, turns around and says, you have to take him to Lexington. <laughs> but during it all, Will smiled, he laughed, he apologized continuously for being such a burden. I met Mr. McKinnon in Lexington and I think Will went on his merry way to surgery that night. <laughs> this year, Will, as we earned the very competitive ROTC scholarship and will attend Wheaton College just outside of Chicago. Will plans to double major in mathematics and business. Will, we are so fortunate that you chose to make HLS your home for the past seven years. I don't know what took us so long, and I don't know what we would have done without you. Thank you, Will. the support group. Everybody shakes their hand. <laughs> Rebecca Grace Musel started at HLS in the seventh grade. When we first received Becky's application, I remember seeing the address on the application as being from Muncie, Indiana. I'm not real familiar with my Indiana geography, so I looked up Muncie, Indiana and discovered that it was northeast of Indianapolis. Logically, I just figured that the family was planning to move to Louisville. But as it turned out, the family had plans to stay in Louisville during the school week and return to Muncie on the long weekends. In the admissions office, we were simply floored, we were honored, and we were scared. <laughs> we were scared that a family would drive approximately 400 mile round trip each week. I figured that we better be really good. <laughs> Becky's mother, for the brunt of these long commutes, as Dr. Musil estimates to me, that his wife has driven nearly 80,000 miles over the course of six years just getting their daughters to school. Becky, from the first day to the last, is a young lady who's full of energy. She's eager. She's willing to participate, offer ideas. Becky's confidence and assertiveness are traits that have served her well at HLS but will continue to serve her well outside of these walls. Being a small school, there are activities and clubs and other extracurricular programs that we do not offer simply because we don't have enough interest or enough students. Really, one of the first things we wanted to do was have a debate team, but we didn't have a coach. We never had real experience on starting the team, and we only had a few students who maybe were interested. Our small debate team, team started with a former HLS student, Jess Kettle, but there was also a very young, enthusiastic Becky Musil right there, learning, watching, and honing her skills. We eventually found a really great coach in Mr. Whaley, but we had a great debate team leader in Rebecca Musil. The debate team has grown a lot in numbers. They win tournaments, and they are regarded locally and statewide as a formidable team. Becky herself won first place in the Varsity Lincoln Douglas Division of the state tournament. As the state champion, Becky is able to compete in the National Forensic League National Tournament this June, coming up, in Overland Park, Kansas. Becky, we wish you the best of luck at that event. Next year, Rebecca Musil will attend the University of Kentucky, although she was accepted to Alabama Center, Indiana University, Texas A&M, Wake Forest, and Purdue. <laughs> So Becky took the cake for applying to the most colleges each year. <laughs> I always tell the students you can only go to one though, but, but it's good to have options. At UK, Becky will be in the honors program and she plans to study business marketing. I've not heard from Becky if she's going to be spending time on the UK debate team yet, but they would be lucky to have her. Becky, thank you for six great years at HLS. Please come back and visit us anytime. The drive from Lexington is shorter for Muncie. <laughs>
towards the end. Joshua Brian Steinbach. Thank you. <laughs> Has been a student at HLS since the fifth grade. <laughs> As most of the upper school knows, Josh is the youngest student in this class. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. Actually, Josh could have started at HLS in the fourth grade, but fifth grade was the better academic fit for Josh at the time. Being the youngest student in a small class, I think Josh has taken his share of gentle teasing. But perhaps the best joke of the year, can I tell it? Oh, you don't know what I'm saying anyway. So perhaps the best joke of the year was at Josh's expense when Tom Mangione, our resident birthday announcer, stands up in the lunchroom, gets everyone quiet to announce Josh's birthday. So everyone gets quiet and, jo and Tom and Jerry goes, everyone please join me in wishing Josh Steinbeck a happy 13th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the thing, but the real thing about Josh that I most appreciate is what he's doing right now. I've always been able to laugh and smile with Josh. He can take a joke, he can deliver a joke. Josh on our senior trip is one of those kids that I joked around with a lot. And I often use my too dry sarcas sarcasm on the entire group. Seniors, especially Maggie, would say to me, Mr. Wheatley, we can't even tell when you're joking or not. And I would say, good. <laughs> <laughs> but Josh would be laughing. He knew. He always could tell. Of course, Josh is also known at HLS cantatas and school events as one of our go-to soloists. Mrs. Melcher, who puts together all the programs, puts his name in the program well before Dr. Bailey tries to pretend he's doing auditions and going to put someone else in Josh's place. <laughs> <laughs> we just go ahead and put it down. But music, music has a very transformative quality. When you hear a beautiful song or a perfect musical score for the first time, I believe it's immediately imprinted on your soul. The first time I heard the PAA suit, it was performed by Matthew Zola and Josh Steinbeck. They may have been in sixth and seventh grade or fifth and sixth grade, I don't know. I'm sure these beautiful songs will continue in the HLS tradition with different soloists for many, many years to come. But in my mind, for as long as I can hear, that song will always be Josh Steinbeck's song. Thank you, Josh, for such a gift. Next year, Josh will also attend the University of Kentucky, and he will be studying vocal arts. He was also accepted to the College Conservatory of Music at the University of Cincinnati and the music program at the University of Michigan. The competition between the colleges for Josh's talents recently intensified, and I felt bad for him and his family as they kept throwing new offers at him. And it was a very stressful time, but I believe Josh is satisfied and pleased with his decision, and I'm happy that this stressful time is over for Josh. But I'm glad so many people wanted you. Josh, I already told you that I want tickets to the first performance at UK. I hope you come back to visit us often. Thank you for eight great years, Josh. I'm getting there. All right. John Thomas Sweeney IV <laughs> has been an HLS student since the fourth grade. He took a hiatus from us during his freshman and sophomore years, that's okay, but he came back, and in my opinion, it was like he never really left. Johnny has always been an HLS student through and through. It seems like this school was made for Johnny. Johnny has mastered the art of saying very little, yet somehow he's able to maintain a cult-like following amongst HLS students. <laughs> my children, who are in the fourth, third, and kindergarten class know who Johnny Sweeney is. <laughs> they don't know the names of all the seniors, I'm sorry to say, but for some reason they know who Johnny is. When I ask them why and how, they don't know, they just know Johnny. <laughs> I think, well, I know that there is a pureness and a sincerity about Johnny, which I think puts people at ease, it makes people feel a bit more comfortable. There is a uniqueness to Johnny that just simply makes him memorable. I believe if anyone spends a couple of minutes talking with Johnny, they leave with a smile on their face, and depending on the topic, they could leave very confused and academically shamed. <laughs> he is very smart. <laughs> I know from observing Johnny for many years that his words, thoughts, opinions carry a lot of weight with his classmates because he shares them judiciously and appropriately. There are very few wasted words with Johnny. 
Some may say not enough words with Johnny, especially when after school I'm asking him, Johnny, where's your brother Danny? And Johnny just stares at me. I don't get upset because I know what's happening in his brain. Johnny is calculating all the possible locations with the probabilities of where a second grade boy could possibly be in this large building. Then finally he, I don't know, that's what he says. <laughs> Next year, Johnny will attend Center College in Danville, Kentucky. Johnny plans to study biology and computer science. I am very confident that Johnny will impress his classmates, his professors, with his brilliant observations and sincere love of learning. He will become a fixture to Center's college campus the same way he has helped mold and shape the identity of the HLS classroom. Johnny, thank you for all the time that you've given to HLS over the years, and please come back anytime. Abigail May Thompson has been an HLS student. No, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I didn't pause. Thank you. She listens. I said I'd say their name. You stand. She listened. I did. Has been a student at HLS longer than any other student who's graduated from this school. She started in the second grade. I even have to ask her this question on stage, but I believe that first year, Abigail, that was also my first year. If I'm not mistaken, I believe we had a first and second grade combined class with Mrs. Aspatore and Mrs. Richards. You were in there. Right. And they were in currently what is Mrs. Taylor's room. There were about 10 or 11 first and second graders together. Abigail has always been a good student. She, like many of the seniors, is the oldest sibling in a very large family. And stereotypically, she takes on the same very responsible and serious tone in the classroom. But maintaining high grades and remaining a good classroom contributor has not always been easy, and Abigail has really learned how to work very hard to reach her academic goals, and she never, ever quits. The HLS curriculum is challenging, but you can never tell it from the quality of Abigail's work, her effort, and, the, and her contributions. Abigail has spent a lot of time on task, and that she is a true classical scholar. I also believe that Abigail, being the longest tenured student at HLS, truly embraces, perhaps more than any other student, because she's been here so long, the HLS classical Christian curriculum, and especially Latin. While some students and families really love HLS as a great school, Abigail is a staunch defender and advocate for Highlands Latin School, our philosophy, the rigor, but most importantly, the Latin. She recognizes the challenge for what it's worth and what it's always been. It's been formative for her. She's allowed the culture and the curriculum, along with the guidance from her parents and teachers, to form her into a beautifully talented and appreciative young woman. For the past 11 years, Abigail and her parents have also driven a long road from southern Indiana to HLS. I can only imagine how that morning commute had been filled for the past 11 years with Abigail practicing and reciting poems, reviewing spelling words, going over Latin vocabulary. The Thompson family has always been all in at HLS, and we are extremely appreciative for your trust and loyalty to us. Abigail has had a great career, and we thank you for your perseverance, your loyalty, and the, and the love. Abigail will attend Belmont Abbey in North Carolina, where she plans to major in communications. I also suspect that Abigail might fit in a Latin course or two down the road, and she'll come back to teach at HLS or to run the school. <laughs> Abigail, thank you again for 11 great years. Please come back. Jackson Lee Walter has been a student at HLS since the fourth grade. Jackson was one of those students in the lower grades who seemed to always go, always get over 100% in every single subject on every single report card for three or four consecutive years. When I would observe a lower school class, and sometimes I had the opportunity to teach when you all were 
in fifth and sixth grade, I could sense that Jackson really demanded a lot from himself and from his teachers, and he had high expectations for his work. He was very serious. I consider Jackson to be a professional student at the age of 12. <laughs> However, as I've got to know Jackson a lot more over the years, inside and outside of the classroom, Jackson is so much more than just a student. As a matter of fact, to only point to those numerous successes that he's had in the classroom, and there are many, would be selling Jackson very short. I've learned really who Jackson Walter was by watching him in athletic competitions over the past five, six years, and by coaching him in soccer this year. Jackson is the heart and soul of every HLS team I've ever seen him on. Oftentimes in the academic world, one can work so hard, can prepare so much, and they can achieve so high, but it's a personal journey. But in the athletic world, you train, you prepare, and ultimately you compete against others who are training and preparing. And you do this competition in a public forum where a winner is crowned and a loser is exposed. And it is in this venue that I've really come to know what Jackson Walter is all about. Jackson gives himself to everything he does, not because he wants glory for himself, but because he really does embrace the camaraderie, the brotherhood, the fellowship of being part of a team. He is the best teammate an athlete would ever want. I believe I've seen Jackson Walter hugging and high-fiving and sharing joy and excitement with more HLS students over the years than anyone else I can ever recall. He's a hugger. <laughs> <laughs> but it's this duality between this professional, very serious student in the classroom and this gregarious, enthusiastic teammate that just so impresses me about Jackson. There's so much to him that I don't feel like we've gotten to know. Jackson has taken the most challenging academic schedule at HLS while playing varsity basketball since the seventh grade. <laughs> playing varsity soccer. He's chosen to be the head of the House of St. Patrick, all the while earning a, a top scholarship to attend the University of Kentucky's engineering school this fall. Jackson plans to study chemical engineering. Jackson, I can't thank you enough for nine great years at HLS. Best of luck at UK, and please come back and visit us anytime. <laughs> Tula Rebecca Wolf has been a student. Did she stand? Okay. <laughs> now I'm going to make them stand, right? <laughs> has been a student at Highlands Latin School since the fifth grade also. This graduating class as a whole, this is our last one, has been together for a long time. Of the 13 seniors here, nine of them started their HLS careers in the lower school. Becca is part of that core group of students that have been here somewhere between the second and fifth grade. Becca has always been a very task-oriented person. If there was ever a person who could multitask and make it look so effortless, it would be Becca. While all of our lives are full of stresses and demands the things we don't, and things that we simply don't want to do, Becca has figured out that with organization, time management, and she creates a plan, all the troubles and fears don't disappear, but they are at least minimized. This is so much easier said than done. I've tried to counsel students on the need for organization and need to have a plan, and I've slipped up and found myself floundering in task and to-do list. But I can attest that in the eight years that I've known Becca Wolf. I've never seen her flustered. I've never seen her out of sorts. She is the epitome of poise and grace. Now at home, I don't know what the case is. <laughs> and sometimes parents share different stories, I don't know. But it's amazing that even during tough courses and tough times at HLS, Rebecca has always seemed to have such perspective and understanding. Our senior year, which I, our senior trip, which I referred to a couple times, was literally on its last leg. The seniors could not come up to a, could not reach a consensus on really where to go, how much money they wanted to spend, what they were going to do wherever they decided to go. I really thought that the trip had a really good chance of just falling to the wayside. I believe the savior of this trip was Becca Wolf. During many discussions of this trip, she carefully listened 
to the ideas, the money concerns, the travel locations, and came back with the help of her classmates, not solely by herself, and a proposal to Mrs. Bowen. And I came in and I was like, are you serious? They and it was perfect. It, it met the needs of all the students and quelled any talk of canceling the trip, and we had a great trip. This little story just highlights what I've known about Becca Wolf for a long time. She can accomplish any task given to her because she careful, she listens, she creates a plan, and she follows through. I could always count on Becca Wolf. Next year, Becca will be attending Boyce College, where she plans to major in elementary education. I can tell you right now in front of all of you, I would hire Becca Wolf any day to teach a class at Highlands Latin School. It would be our blessing and privilege to have a person of her quality and character in our classrooms. Becca, thank you for eight great years at HLS. Please come back anytime.
We practiced. There you go. Mrs. Lowe, our founder and headmistress, will be presenting the 2014 Highlands Latin School Diplomas. The graduates will be called up alphabetically and will receive their diploma at the center podium. Parents, you're welcome to stand, take pictures of your graduate, but we're also taking pictures as well. And now for the presentation of our diplomas. Daniel Cooper Boss. Magdalena Claire Collum. <laughs> Lily Chenault Dobbs. Shelby Elizabeth Dugan. <laughs> Brad Thomas Heimbrock. Christina Marie Holloway. <laughs> William Robert McKinnon. Rebecca Grace Musel. <laughs> Joshua Brian Steinbach. John Thomas Sweeney the fourth. <laughs> Abigail May Thompson. Jackson Lee Walter. Oh. <laughs> 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 
Tula Rebecca Wolf. Parents, grandparents, relatives, friends, faculty, students, thank you for sharing in this very special day with our 2014 Highlands Latin School graduates. I would now like to take the opportunity to present to you our 2014 graduating class. Graduates, would you please come forward.
want to invite everyone to the reception afterwards in Fellowship Hall, the cafeteria, the kids know it as. So we invite you to come to the reception. We hope you'll be able to share with them there. Let's pray together our benediction. And as you go, remember, in the goodness of God, you were brought into this world. By the love of God, you have been kept even to this very moment. And by the grace of God, you will move forward into the future. May you have the courage to never sell yourself short and to always risk something big for something good. May God take your mind and think through you. May God take your heart and love through you. May God take your lips and speak through you. And may God take your life and live through you that you may show God's love every day as long as you live. Through Christ our Lord, amen.